bear with me for a second. Bear with me for a second. This is a, a little experiment, I guess, a little idea, a little thought experiment that I'm doing as far as uh, there being a difference between a job, a service, help, whether or not I'm in a position to help you, whether or not I can even help you, whether or not what I do will help you. You you have to want the help. You feel me? Otherwise, it's just a service. It's just a service. Sure, I might serve you and that entitles me to compensation, but if you don't ask for my help, it's a free fucking service. Call it being courteous. My name is Alex. This is the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Another episode, Wednesday, March 30th, 2022. A little proof of life. Because it's been about a week. And I do have to uh, I do have to check in with y'all every now and then. Otherwise, if I disappear off the face of the earth, it's because I got picked up off the face of the earth. I mean, you know, shit happens. Until then, though, this podcast might constitute a free service. Might. Keyword is might, as in it may. I may or may not have advertisements on it. Some product plugs, maybe a sponsorship of some kind. Build enough traction. You know, we could work something out. We could we could cut something up with one or two companies. You know, four or five companies, you know, 10 or 20 companies. I don't fucking know. But if our work gets recognized, if corporate cowboys get recognized for their service, you see, it ain't help. It's not help. Corporate cowboys setting themselves apart for the service which they perform. And you could split hairs further if you'd like for the services. But generally, in general, the overall service performed by corporate cowboys is uh, corporate war, for lack of a better word. It's innovation. It's creativity. It's revolution. Trademarked in corporate. It's corporate war, trademarked. (laughs) So, how far, how far must one push it for their, for their conduct, for their action to be that of a service and not just the help? Because when, when folks help one another out, there is... There's got to be a need. There's got to be a need, some kind of call for assistance. Some kind of request being made. Whereas a service, you might as well perform it on principle. That's a higher power. That homage is being paid to. There's, there's a deference to, to duty. There's a deference to to principles and obligations. That service, it goes hand in hand with integrity. Otherwise, you might be asked to help fuck up someone's life, fuck up an entire country. And it starts locally. But if you can't see that many steps ahead, you helping under the guise of service, I mean, shit, they could paint that, they could paint that any way they want to make it sound. It's politics, baby. We're talking, we're talking social psychology. They could say, quote unquote, it's public health, quote unquote, it's community standards. 
And they, and they could call it a service. They could call it public service. And when they contract you for the help, you're just fucking helping ruining lives. You could be helping ruin lives. And you don't even, you wouldn't even know it. You wouldn't even see it. Because you jump into this shallow box, get paid a check, and yet you, you still might live check, check to check. Yet it's so compartmentalized that you don't want to look out of the box. Why? Because a number of reasons, right? They don't pay you to look out the box. Oh, that doesn't fall within your job description. Then is that really a service? If it's a fucking job, are you doing it for public service without the fucking quotes around it? Are you really doing that in the best interest of your humanity? <laughs> Come on, man. Don't fucking, uh, don't, don't fucking. <laughs> What's the, what's the term I'm looking for? Don't fucking... Don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint me. Don't... Don't make me look like a fucking... Don't try and make me look like a fucking idiot. I've been in the game for a minute. So I know what it looks like when you're sitting in a boardroom. I know what it looks like when you're sitting in a boardroom... And someone mentions, you know, we could, we could just have we could just have the governor issue an executive order. You, you know the <laughs> you know the kind of clout that you could cut with a knife. You need to have to have those words come out of your mouth. Yeah, we could just have the governor issue an executive order that will outline yada yada yada. I mean, not just an executive order with one point. A, a multiple point executive order. God damn. Help? Are you serious? Service? Public service? When you can just bend motherfuckers to your will? Bend motherfuckers in perceived positions of power to your will, effectively to your will. <laughs> you can just puppet them. In the name of quote unquote public service. <laughs> Yo, that's some gangster ass shit, man. I'll have you know. I'll have you know there's gangsters in every state capital. There's gangsters at your local PTA meeting. There's gangsters in your local town hall. There's gangsters in your universities. In your community colleges and your fucking high schools. There's gangsters and they don't do it out of service. They do it because it's a fucking job. And they're in the fucking mob. That is power dynamics. Effectively, that's the fucking dynamic of power. The dynamics of power and how it works in organizational hierarchies. That's a power hierarchy. It's effectively what you need in order to infiltrate. It's what you have to know. You have to be able to recognize and pick up the signs. Who does what and what gets done by whom within an organization what can be done by whom you want to make note as soon as you set foot inside a corporate you sign your name on the dotted line if and and if if by chance which i think the chance is pretty fucking big that you did not negotiate your employment contract it's safe to say it's safe to say you you're just you're just a button man <laughs> you're a you're a peon, I guess. If we're going to analogize it to uh, a feudal caste system, you're a fucking peon. You're a nobody. You're a hired gun. 
And even then, I mean, that's stretching it to being a hired gun. You're literally just cannon fodder. They're going to prop you up on the front line and use you for some <laughs> or some advertising campaign. Use you in some new promotional campaign. Because that's what institutions do. Unless you set yourself apart by your service, you must set yourself apart by what you do in service. Only then can you negotiate effectively. Only then might you be an independent contractor. You're not tied down and bound by terms of employment. Nah, 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 nah. They become terms of engagement. You ascend a whole nother level of what is corporate. You want to put yourself on the same level as corporate? You have to treat yourself. You have to educate yourself. You have to step your game up. How you interact with people... And what you say you can do effectively. You, you have to arm yourself with these skills in order to make them into a service. And in order for your services to be attractive, you have to have a way with words. Recognizing a power dynamic and how the power literally flows through people. And that comes... That comes from need. That comes from necessity. Being the mother of all invention, of all innovation, of all creation. Necessity. Whose strings you can pluck and what they sound like when you pluck them. I don't mean pluck them, right? That's a little too figurative that's a little too illustrative but how it sounds when uh, you action them when you interact with them just the sound that they make and the sound in this analogy being the results of you pulling strings and you operating levers in this corporate world it's going to take a little trial and error. You could also listen to the podcast. Heed my advice. Listen to my instruction. I tried to teach many, many times from experience. Many stories come from experience. But if you can't learn from me, if you insist are not learning from me, hey, come work with me. Corporate will teach you. <laughs> come work with me. Corporate will teach you. Never. Ever. Should I say never? Nah, never, never. Will I... Reduce myself to say that I work for somebody else. I work with, and these individuals are my associates. That is some corporate cowboy shit. It starts from there. And man, it took me the longest time to be able to value myself as not only an individual but a corporate entity to be reckoned with that's being professional it's not just because oh they're going to you know onboard you oh your salary now oh you you work in corporate who do you work for who do you work under fuck all of that you're trying to get ahead in life if you're trying to get ahead in life, I insist, I insist 
on thinking independently. You don't have to act independently. You could have associates who you work with. But you have to be able to think independently. That's how you think outside of the box. That's how you recruit people from outside of the box. That's how you expand your reach. That's how you spread a message. And effectively, in a roundabout way, that's why the mission is never accomplished. The mission is everlasting. This work is never over. The struggle should be short term because as you grow in experience, it it becomes easier to branch out. It becomes easier to network, talk with people. The more you develop and hone your social skills, the easier it becomes to pick proverbial locks. It just becomes easier. Become it becomes fun. So the struggle should be short term. Should be. Keyword should be. But you know, this learning curve is a fucking steep one for some people. But the hustle, the hustle is fucking long term. The hustle is for the long run. Hustle till the fucking grave comes, man. Hustle until harvest season. Until you got to reap what you sow. Until you got to help help others harvest what they've planted. <laughs> oh, shit. You know. Well, you know. As a service. In, in service of a higher power. <laughs> you got to fucking help others harvest what they've planted. That's fucking funny. Yeah, because some motherfuckers don't want to... Don't want to eat the fruit that they've sowed, man. They've worked so hard planting lemons that when life gives them lemons, they haven't the fucking faintest idea of how to hustle and get from out of the shade of the lemon tree. I'm just going off on a tangent on that one. But it fits. It's a suitable analogy. It's a suitable... uh, Is that a metaphor? I guess. In principle, service is what you ought to focus on. And not in the... uh, traditional sense that this is a a service economy or a service industry you could right but the service is going to be personal almost always it's going to be with people and and if we're following the uh the line of reasoning that business is war and that business is always personal then you better be on your fucking 10 toes personalizing and tailoring your service to everyone in your life, for everyone in your life. As generalized as you want to make it, as personalized as you want. There's individuals I know that are capable of navigating a room. Don't have to say much. The fewest sentences as possible. And yet they carry an air about them that's significant, important. And it's not because of how they entered the room. It's, it begins before that. It's knowing that they're going to enter the room. And the individuals who know them by reputation, for what they do, 
and how they do it, i.e. their service, that's what causes recognition. That's what builds a personal brand, something you don't even have to trademark, something that cannot be taxed. You know, that's all corporate cowboy shit, though. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great week. Catch you next time.